So my name is Sunday Stilfus. I am the executive assistant and membership manager here at Mocha GA. And I have some notes because I get nervous sometimes, so bear with me. Uh, tonight we are celebrating and featuring uh, Damian Alston, who is our 2020-2021 Working Arts Project Fellow.
ultimately making them travel during this restricted time of movement or restricted time for movement. I long for a moment of distance, space, and quietness. I see Atlanta as a delta or revolving door settling into one stagnant space rotating. For anyone to go through time and to come and go like a guest house. During this isolation, I reflected, softened, desired, forgave, and restarted, only coming into a race with myself, not thinking about the speed it takes to go from point A to B, but instead I took a breath of longevity for the marathon of my life. So we can now go through each piece and then I will continue reading my notes. Um, I don't know exactly what order I would desire to go through the pieces, so I'm just going to like pick one and then we can just go into it. But we'll just go into this one. <laughs> um, this past yesterday you taught me a lot about not only being subjectively about myself but the sense of origin of identity, but they can tell us about how my own body can challenge or interrogate the situations of entrapment or stagnation onto the body with the community specifically. So I think about like different moments uh, that seeks truth. We think about photography as like the practice of showing the truth, saying that this thing is real when we see this person in this presence. So during the last year, when we had all the protests, I wasn't necessarily like, interested in documenting activism in the sense of performance and seeing it to the archive or that way. So I was very interested in the idea of how can this moment of dystopia motivate my inspirations for a utopian view. Not necessarily thinking of the direction to go towards like more. I really much so wanted to encompass or imbue the center of compass and spin around thinking about not just north, south, east, west, but thinking about the up and down, thinking about the same body that protects our mind, the positive mind, the negative mind, the neutral mind, the neutral mind being the meditative mind, Positive mind being the optimistic mind, and then the negative mind being the defensive mind. For this work, I was inspired by Jean Balasari passage 2020, and I was also inspired by a lot of his thought pieces, the need to separate the moment which she lived in. But instead of John Balasari being more separatory, I was interested in disguising chaos, um, also thinking about chaos, the pressure of chaos, like stepping on hand. What does that look like when it's applied to so much tension in a space such as Atlanta? Last summer, I went through multiple protests through the Southeast region, uh, mostly importance to Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd, Richard Brooks, Milan Aubrey. And I went to a hospital state where Kendrick Johnson was now all in the And I bring these things to life because I'm very much interested in how these connections of life and death to the black body within the Southeast region. So within the protest on those, I mean, I wasn't very much so interested in the idea of documenting activism for the sake of activism or for journalistic sake. I was more so interested in making my art piece. I broke down all my photographs in this instructed way that sort of helps me negate away from traditional photography, but then still help me see these moments as windows of memories fragmented, broken up, collapsing the sense of what last year could look like. I use other guys to not necessarily deviate from the want to identify someone, but to protect those participants within the process. Thinking about the ethics of photography, the future and the state that it holds as a photographer, the tool in the history of the camera as it has conditioned and sad, made stagnancy against the black body and black culture. Atlanta and a few other cities I looked up is one of the highest surveilled states. And I say that because this isn't one of the also the highest surveilled states. It's one of the states that sort of has this infatuation with camera, performance, and film sets. Atlanta has this thing where we take something down, we demolish it to build something for the camera to then review it and then make it more than what it is. We have 
Elms, we have Tyler Park Studios, we have the Avengers, we have tax free write offs, and we constantly dismantle, decompress, regurgitate the same kind of cycle to push those on the people out, push them right out and think about the displacement or don't think about the displacement for the film. I bring this all to say because my background is in photography or a lens based practice that I think about the ethics of the extension of the body within the digital sphere. How important is it that our body, the information we take in, uh, what we read into, how important is the truth of those things? Because photography has the highest responsibility to reflect what truth would be. So, that all came from this piece. This piece is all set from the handbed. And this was on I-75, I-85 South, where Richard Brooks, where the Wendy's was, where Richard Brooks was killed. So this view is from up on the interstate, people downward, photographing everyone going up. And again, I broke it up into this grid to think about my photographs as this physical obstruction to time, breaking down the idea of memory and collapsing the what is real and what isn't, while also questioning and sending the idea of surveillance. Also, because of we're going to steer into this, I'll just let it steer into this on here. I feel like there's an outcome of the work that I made since undergrad, thinking about not only time and distance, life, death, and infancy and rebirth, but really thinking about what negotiates identity onto the body whether that be historically um, through different objects that hold say so or different kinds of social spheres such as the brown bag um, while also thinking about different foods that uh, American youth carry that was mistaken as a gun um, example of uh, skills to Trayvon Martin so this piece is uh, towards Trayvon Martin and that whole research that I've been doing not really interested in moments of uh, should the photograph be the setting or should an object itself. But because an object is always conflated to the validating of killing American youth, I wanted to use the objects itself I could be mistaken as a gun. Um, and I think it's also very like just known that there is an interest in signs and symbols. All the signs that were photographed during the protests, I was interested in what those spoke to in the environment towards everyone within it, rather than what it trying to sell to me. Um, so there's a lot of work that I shot that were just the protest signs. I'm interested in just the sign, I am a man. Not necessarily, not necessarily like because it's just blatant for what it is, but just the formal gesture of flipping it 180 degrees upside down. And the fluidity of the science symbol, what does it mean to be a man, what does it mean to have masculine and feminine energy. I also had a title to where it was uh, spelled out, like I am a man, and I took a video piece out from that video where it was being repetitively saying I am a man, I am a man, I am a man, and thinking about this rhythmic pattern and how can I embody this kind of mood, phonetic notation towards language, thinking and questioning the language and all this other kind of stuff. What else? Um, this is more so not a piece of, I want to say embodiment, but a piece that sort of timelines yesteryear up till now. I find it very interesting because I didn't really have much of a full year. I'm going to take this a while. When I was a girl, I would get so much in trouble because all I would do was talk in class. So it's like, this is like all I needed was like talk and so on. Um, when I was younger, uh, also, I was interested in the idea of not necessarily the archive or the family memory itself, but the identity of exploring what family memory could be. So intentionally, in a lot of my earlier work, I would have shrugged five by seven. I would cut out certain parts of moments that I would like, sort of like a move for the situations. And it made me think about 
and I'm just, again, photography has this 2D object, right? How can I abstract it formally to then break up and break down that memory and regenerate something new? So, these photos go from my past year going to the Southeast, different moments of going to be in social gatherings, my desire to be in these social gatherings because of the isolation, and not necessarily only because of the isolation, but because there was this need to protest, to celebrate, to memorialize. So, through this whole time of the protest, I went to Ahmaud, where Ahmaud Aubrey broke into the house, I went to some the shores, um, I went through Valdosta to photograph just their intentions. And though every, even though every image is not present, um, there's a lot more that I'm working through when it comes to these images. So this is just something that I wanted to bring in to sort of collapse and expand the sense of time within the imagery. And yeah, I just like the really fun things. Um, I'm also like very, 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 very much so inspired by a lot of um, the black contemporary artists here. And I think about like a lot of the space in which a lot of artists went into, like the house, looking. About like I think going to the house of the second third, but me growing up in the south, I remember like going to subdivisions, seeing houses be built, and my grandmother or my dad would want to go into the house, even though there was like no lock or anything, it just felt like a whole thing that they can go into. Um, also thinking about houses, I really critically think about the idea of like artists such as Chris Clark, and I think about the idea of displacement within the community and culture is constant doing and undoing a foundational work to build a home, to build a family. What does that look like when it's constantly being pushed out, especially with the shifting tensions of Atlanta and how we identify with the space of Atlanta as a into this new thing. Um, and so, that is this work. Anybody has any questions? I don't know. What else? What do y'all want me to talk about next? We can talk about the Amman Aubrey piece. Um, beautiful thing about this piece, again, very, very intense, very photographic. I'm very interested in not just the theoretics of the history of photography, but because of this pandemic and because there was this longing for touch and intimacy, I wanted to become more tactile within my work. So I wanted to find what it meant to like touch and build uh, in this way that felt close to a photographic practice, um, but not necessarily. So like instead of sign I use indigo. Instead of non bicoloring, I use like food coloring. Uh, and for this piece, it became really tactile because I dyed uh, flower petals in different food coloring. And then I had a crush and I made it within the vinyl. And thank God for like this award because yes, I am still going at anything, but I could not do all this by myself. I had like six to eight assistants helping me individually, so thank God for that. Because there was a lot of the test of this exhibition showing me that I cannot it accelerated my ideas in the way that I move about my practice in a way that I can no longer defer my responsibilities or defer uh, a job I have to be doing delegating. Um, so doing this, doing this installation, doing all of these was very helpful with the idea of what teamwork looks like or what it looks like to just be over a team of people. Um, so I had one of my apprentices, Jackson, help me sew all of these together. Uh, and again, I'm breaking up the photograph into these fragmented windows of memory while also thinking about this moment of longing and desire and intimacy during this pandemic. Um, shadows are also very important to me because shadows are very, they speak to the indexical. They're also very, they move, they have emotion, and they sort of draw attention to things that we don't pay attention to. And I wanted to play with this form of intimacy that made sense, but because of the allotted space that I had, the intimacy of like, let's say the still lives I enjoy making start become installation and sculptural, so all my work became larger, 
just to match the energy of the space. I really like making this one a lot. It was very like, it's one of my favorites. What other one should I want to show you going on? That one. Uh, this one was collected. This one was designed to be collected by the Burning Collection from Uncle Georgia. So thank you. Uh, this one is called Where in the World Did You Go? And for this piece and the pairing in the gold piece, I became even interested in, I love the color blue. I thought of it as like a moment of intimacy. There's a history of artists that relates to the color blue in these weird ways or vivid ways. And for me, it became a space of either a moment after black and white or a space between or before black and white. Like there was something there where blue can be a medium form for what it is versus I was always interested in science type. Uh, the piece is called Where in the World Did It Go? Because as a happy accident, this became an abstract representation of the world map, where it also became a thing where I thought, oh, it looks like symbiosis sort of cell. And I'm using these like threads from this like drawing to sort of think about a map, not a map, but a net, thinking of a net of communication, thinking about the ways we communicate, how we communicate. Why do we communicate? When do we communicate? And how should we communicate? But in the sense of looking for someone, it ultimately related to in 2019, uh, one of my friends in another year passed with me around the Tidy Island. Uh, and I wasn't here to necessarily contend with that loss, but it did stick with me because I was not in this region at all. There was nothing I could do when it came to finding her body. And so, I, I just felt responsible to make work that goes towards the friendship's laws. Um, this is where I'm going to go. And I love this piece a lot. Um, I don't think I gave this one a title, but I'm very interested. I'm interested in a lot of things. I'm interested in that's why I really want to do more classes. But again, there is this mode of wanting to touch, to feel not just hitting the shadow leaves on my camera, not just manipulating the light, but I really wanted to understand the materials that I imbued upon her. Why was, why was I sensible to certain things? Um, so, I have this huge intersection where I think about food deserts, I think about what keeps communities displaced, what keeps communities stagnant in space. I think about public transit, and I also just think about a lot of familial trauma or the familial bond that I have with my stories and others. And this piece, it doesn't have a title on the wall, but it was called I Hope This Works, in the sense of knowing how the lottery system works, thinking about not just
is a tall guest house. Um, this is in relationship to my cousin and one of my friends who passed last year. And I had the title after this poet named Rumi, and it's called The Guest House because the poem is really talking to me about how it's falling about. Um, this being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor, welcome and entertain them all, even if they are proud of sorrows, who buy the super house, empty of its furniture, still treat each as honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight, the dark thought, the shame, the malice, even at the door of life being invited in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide to the arm. And again, the poem really resonates with me because it's very important to not necessarily know who you always go in contact with, but to always see them at their level. Don't see them past what they're them. Don't give anything past any judgment. Just be there about it and always enjoy each person that comes to your discussion. Once 
Once upon a time, there was a little red hen who lived on a farm. She was friends with a lazy dog, a sleepy cat, and a noisy yellow duck. One day, the little red hen found some seeds on the ground. The little red hen had an idea. She would plant seeds. The little red hen asked her friends, who will help you plant these seeds? Not I barked the lazy dog. Not I purred the sleepy cat. Not I barked the noisy yellow duck. Then I will, said the little red hen. So the little red hen planted the seeds all by herself. When the seeds had grown, the little red hen asked her friends, who will help me cut the wheat? Not I part the lazy dog. Not I part the sleepy cat. Not I part the noisy yellow duck. Then I will, said the little red hen. So the little red hen cut the wheat up all by herself. When all the wheat was cut, the little red hen asked her friends, who will help me take the wheat to the mill to be ground into flour? Y'all already forgot that. Not I, said all the Then I will, said the little red hen. So the little red hen bought the wheat to the mill all by herself, ground the wheat into flour, and carried the heavy sack of flour back to the farm. The tired little red hen asked her friends, who will help me bake the bread? All the animals. None of them want to. Not I. Then I will, said the little red hen. So the little red hen baked the bread all by herself. When the bread was finished, the tired little red hen asked her friends, Who will help me eat the bread? I will bark the lazy dog. I will purr the sleepy cat. I will quack the noisy dog. No, said the little red hen. I will. And the little red hen ate the bread all by herself. So, I also feel like I just related to this story because in the essence of, and this is such an ironic moment for like how we view America and how we view freedom, but I enjoyed this moment for this fellowship because I got to understand it's not just through me that I can be it's not just through me that I can see something through individually, but it ultimately took a lot of me running around and not necessarily knowing everybody's skill sets how they can help me, but me going around and knowing that I can take a bunch of no's, knowing that I'm happy to take a bunch of no's, but I'm going to keep asking so I can get my yes to make this bread. And so, I guess now I will open it up for questions, and then I will just read my thank you and that's it. <laughs> Where's my wine? <laughs> Anyone have questions? Okay. I kind of, I'm going to mess with you. <laughs> I kind of want to interrogate the ideas that you presented about how Atlanta kind of builds things and then cannibalizes it. Um, I see that from the um, entertainment perspective, but then of course historically you have this idea that, you know, we were a railroad transportation city that was burned down and built on top of. And then you still have the remnants of like the civil rights movements and all of those things that still exist. So you have that kind of happening on top of one another, the preservation of the cannibalism, but the cannibalism is a part of the entertainment. Like, how do you differentiate that in the ideas of the piece? Or? Yes. Um, well, I'll always Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 And so what does entertainment look like when it comes to what is the thing going under the table? What is the thing that is distracting us from what's currently going on? So like, our politics right now, our, our news media, it's supposed to be something elevated and informative, but it became something very entertaining because we have a reality star, use our, con our, uh, our constitution as a whole reality TV script. 
So we need to think critically about, is this entertainment or is this informed elevation? Thinking really, 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 uh, thinking about the, not just the reproduction of information, but how does that reproduction of information, as it trickles down, how would that lead to something else? And I find that's where we can talk about entertainment and elevation, and not only that, but like the idea of entertainment in ways where the same time where um, we had our mask laws uh, lifted was the same time that voter suppression laws also were passed. Like there's always something uh, undermining the thing that wants to entertain us. So it's, why are we looking for something to always entertain us? I, I think people just want like a quick reaction and stuff, and entertainment is the fastest way to like validate that kind of uh, stimulation to that. Here you go. Um, I really liked your observation about how you know people like to the nineteen ninety six Olympics Olympics sort of you know it was a big like problem for Atlanta, um, but also how that connects to sort of like the veneer that the city tries to like create for itself. Um, and I've been to Georgia my whole life, but I just moved to Atlanta in April, and I, I met a lot of people, but also, there's a lot of really simple about the direction the city is headed, and I came, you know, like really starry eyed about like, you know, the opportunities in the city and everything. Um, but, you know, you mentioned that you're optimistic about where the city was headed. Um, I thought that was really interesting. I wanted to know why. Optimistic. Ooh. Um, welcome to our answer. Take it and you go ahead and ride it with those people that can help you bring out that kind of life shift. 
but it's really hard to see that change just in that one moment. And you have to be able to like want to have groundbreaking desires even through like the BS. Um, but I am very hopeful because like the goal is like I made I made my I made my home here, which I think is beautiful. This is a good space for. I identify as like a black man and just seeing like so many that come through here that can sit for stuff. And I think Atlanta is such a beautiful space for that suppressed energy of people that get to identify and figure out who they are here because Atlanta does a lot for that. Um, but yeah. Well, they need to fix up all the transit system. That's always gonna be my new domain critique. I do not care. Like Marvel would not be taking serious until they actually have to stop some of the routes. And Uber sucks. So What's the next question? So you went to school for photography mm -hmm. and did a lot of photography. There were bodies of work and then uh, I understand at some point you sort of like stopped. Mm -hmm. Now we see more photography. Can you kind of talk about that journey? I really love that journey because uh, I can't like so like when I would apply for stuff, I would be just straight up like photography is dead in the first three to five sentences. Photography is done what it needed to do. We see it work its way around all the themes, we see it do what it needs to do, but there's still black bodies being killed and we're still subject to watching these bodies be killed and circulated on these social media outlets. And even through seeing this one-to-one -one evidence of someone being killed in you know, photography and video holding this responsibility to carrying that message, we still don't see any consequences to those that are doing the killing. And so that's what sort of makes me like tired or what made me tired with photography is, is because we see so much of the truth. We see so much of that this is evidence or proof to someone being killed and how come there is no consequence, but there's nothing being done. So there was two to three years ago, I had a great exhibition at Day and Night. Um, thank you, Stephen. Um, and it was my dismissal to photography and any critical idea of what photography could do which just included a bunch of works on paper um, and a bunch of drawings. But it just makes me, the reason why I circle back to photography is that's the whole point of your practice. You're supposed to find a reason to like love it, hate it, step away from it, possibly go into another practice and then come back into it and see how it critically performs where you are. And what I've learned with photography, it's not necessarily just the practice of truth, but it's also the practice that allows to borrow from other disciplines. I could have easily put all this work just in a photo and in a frame, but I became very um, uninterested in the idea of a photo. So again, building these installations in still lives because I know photos will be taken of them, and then that is the reproduction itself is people coming to take the photo. Uh, but it's because I was able to find a way to speak to my work in multi multitudes, rather than photography, is why I stepped away from it, and why I'm also stepping back into it to also challenge it and show how I can be in and out of just a photographic practice. But I'm going to get my <laughs> degree in photography, so we'll see how that works. Um, any other questions? Okay.
because I see in the work that it's not only about the passing of members of our community, but it's about living and being just a generative um, or in the way of death and tragic death. And Seeing you so vibrantly, it's like doing this shit. <laughs> and like doing it your way is really incredible. And <clears throat> just thinking kind of deeply about it today, it's uh, it's like easy to. Let the past be more um, and to like let the past go. But when you think about the potential of life, if those that the past happened, that's what's going to Yeah, but like, there's, it's so important to make things out of that and to, to carry on and experience joy and uh, finding the meaning. Uh, and I, I see you uh, like coming from photography and like using mixed media, but also using Was it 
I didn't do this all this this year, but I did. Um, so again, thank you, thank you. Do we have any more questions? And then I will just leave my little thank you. If we don't have any more questions, but if we have a question, let me know. Thank you. I 
I became my own guidance, and with that, I hardened my focus. I became something slash someone I always dreamt to attain. Thank you to the Charles Ritten Foundation, and to Nori Foundation, and the National Endowment for the Arts. And lastly, thank you, Uncle Georgia, for this opportunity.